بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عبد المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن بيده اختفى وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى وقوم تسبيك بأوان of the doubt that the Islamophobes and the Christian missionaries are trying to use against Islam that claiming that from the Islam belief that we should kill every every non-Muslim and that every non-Muslim is our enemy and that is a lie rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself refuted this doubt or this lies against Islam so like uh, last week me myself I was speaking one of these EDL followers or Tommy Robinson supporters literally she said why you wanna kill everyone look subhanAllah how they've been brainwashed subhanAllah so as I've mentioned before some of them they have been misguided misinformed so you have to speak to them explain to them but some of them they just have pure hatred for Islam regardless what you're gonna tell them they don't want to hear the truth so this episode inshallah ta'ala is for those who are sincerely seeking the truth and they want to hear what the Muslim has to say regarding this lies and deception from the Islamophobes and the Christian missionaries. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Quran in Surah Al-Mumtahina لَا يَنْهَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ لَمْ يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَلَمْ يُخْرِجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ أَنْ تَبَرُّوهُمْ وَتُخْسِطُ إِلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُخْسِطِينَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this verse Allah does not forbid you to deal justly and kindly with those who never fought against you because of your religion or never took you out from your houses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us to deal justly and kindly with them because Allah loves those who are, or are those who act justly. So when this noble verse was revealed or when the noble verses that precede this one were revealed, so there were some verses revealed before this one, those which incited enmity towards the disbelievers who oppressed, expelled, and waged the war against the Muslims, the believers thought that they applied to, uh, so the, the believers thought that, they, they, that those verses applied to every situation. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about to fight against those who try to harm us and harm our family and kill us and, uh, uh, and other than that. So, the, the believers thought those verses apply to every non-Muslim. Uh, so, to, uh, to, uh, to, or to every situation. So that they adhered to them in a, a most complete way. As a result, as a result, they would help from maintaining relations with their polytheist relatives and, and uh, thought that this also entered into what Allah has prohibited in those verses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed them that such behaviors or such behavior does not enter into the unlawful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah does not forbid you with respect to those who do not fight you because of religion, who do not expel you from your homes, from being kind toward them and behave uh, and behaving justly with them. Indeed, Allah loves those who, are, who, are, who act justly. Meaning Allah does not prohibit you. Meaning Allah does not prohibit you from kindness uh, and maintaining relations, mutual goodness and justice with polytheists, those from your relatives and others so long as they do not undertake to fight you because of religion and to expel you from your homes. In such a case, there is nothing to prevent you from maintaining ties with them and that being um, to be good to them. There have been no caution, uh, no caution uh, or corruption in maintaining ties with them in this situation. This is similar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned regarding a polytheist parents whose son is a Muslim. So this verse, clearly, the author, again, this article has been taken from Abu Iyad. May Allah preserve him. He's doing great, great job. May Allah bless him and may Allah reward him in refuting the doubts of the Islamophobes and uh, the Christians against Islam. Uh, his, his website, the Noble Quran, uh, www.thenoblequr'an.com. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the verses that the Muslim, they have to fight to defend themselves and defend their family, defend their honor, defend their wealth. So the, the Muslims, for those verses, apply to it in, in every situation. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent down 
another verse to explain that those verses apply to specific people and in specific situations. As for those, Allah SWT clearly mentioned, as for those who never fought against us, because, or, or never took uh, because our religion, or never took our, uh, uh, expel us from our houses, then Allah does not forbid us or prohibit us to deal with them justly and kindly. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent on a verse, and this verse to show you that the rahmah of Islam, the mercy of Islam. This verse was sent down concerning um, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas. Sa'ad Abi Waqas, his, he loved his mother very, very much. When he became Muslim, his mother, she said to him, yeah, Sa'ad, I'm not going to eat or to take shower until you leave Islam. Until you leave Islam. So he said, my mother, I love, this is my religion, I'm not going to leave Islam, so just start eating and taking shower. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down verses to say to him and to any Muslim who has a parents, they are polytheists or disbelievers, that if they tell you to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't obey them and you don't listen to them, but you have to be good to them. Allahu Akbar. Because sometimes you're looking for any leeway to disrespect your parents. You know, Shaitan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even if they tell you to disbelieve in Allah, that should not be leeway for you to disrespect them. Rather, be good to them. Be kind to them. Allahu Akbar. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, but if they both strive to make you associate others with me in worship, a matter which you have no knowledge, then do not obey them, but accompany, uh, accompany them in the life, uh, 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 in the li uh, in the life of this world with kindness. That's from Imam Sadi may Allah have mercy upon him. After discussing the various and different views regarding this verse, At Tabari says the most correct of these statements is of the one who said this verse pertains to all of the factions from the uh, different beliefs and religion. That you behave kindly toward them and that you are just regarding them because Allah generalized with his saying those who do not fight you because of religion and who do not expel you from your homes. So this verse is not just applied to people of the book, not applied to every disbeliever. When the condition they never fought against us because of our religion or tried to expel us from our houses to deal with them justly and kindly. That's why we refute ISIS and we expose them to be liars and the evil doers by killing innocent people in Britain or in Saudi or in Morocco, Algeria, Pakistan or America or Spain that is not the teaching of Islam because those children in the bus or the women in the train or innocent people what has to do with it? Now, killing innocent people is haram in Islam so the Imam Tabari goes on to say so this applies to to the, the people who possess that attribute. He did not specify some as opposed to others in this regard. Then the, he mentions here, uh, Abu Iyad mentioned, this is a decisive uh, muhkam verse and has not been abrogated. Yes, I've heard this some doubt of the Christians in, especially speakers, Kurna, Allah al Avya. He said this verse has been abrogated. Kadab, liar. No, that's not true. Some scholars mentioned about that is incorrect. That is incorrect. Why? Because he, the other who mentioned why the reason that has not been abrogated. So this verse is muhkam, is decisive. Verse and has not been abrogated and is a refutation of Islam haters, apostates, atheists, and other those who are ignorant and those who follow their desires or both. The famous Quran commentator. Al Imam al Shalqiti, may Allah have mercy upon him, discussed, discussed this issue at length and brought numerous clear historical and textual evidences to establish that this verse has not been has not been abrogated. Has not been abrogated. He said this is the view that has been deemed correct by Ibn Jari Tabari. Because you know sometimes the Christians say, No, the reason you're saying that your scholar is now saying it, but the scholar of the past now, Ibn Jari Tabari. The time when the Muslim were in, uh, they, they had the power, uh, the power and they, were on, uh, they had the authority. So not taqiyya as people lying against us. That's, that's a shi'ism. And, and uh, people are 
uh, like one of this uh, uh, Tommy Robinson supporter, uh, uh, this old woman, Mala Qaeda, she proper has a hatred for Islam. I gave her a book by Abu Iyad, subhanAllah. So when I met her the week after, she said, Ah, oh, that's taqiyya. No, it's not taqiyya. You and people like you, they are very happy eyes still alive because you want to utilize ISIS as a, a leeway to turn people away from Islam by claiming ISIS have implemented Islam. Well, lie some non-Muslims, they are very happy that ISIS are around and still existing. Rather, maybe undercover, they help them and aid them to give bad name to Islam. To give bad name to Islam. For example, last time outside the station, giving a da'wah, and we have our CC da'wah gazebo clearly warning against extremism. One guy standing looking at it for long, like we warn against extremism. He said, no, no, I don't believe that. He said, you're lying. I said, not me, I'm lying. You're not happy with it. It's not me, I'm lying. I'm speaking the truth, Alhamdulillah. You're not happy with it. That's, that's the reality. So, uh, 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 now. You have Shaqeet, he said. Now, discuss this issue. As you have at length and brought numerous, numerous clear historical and sexual evidences to establish that this verse has not been abrogated. He said this view that has been deemed correct by Ibn Jayat Tabari and which was authenticated by Imam Shafi'i, may Allah have mercy upon him, is that which is necessitated by the spirit of Islamic legislation. He also used, used as the evidence that the verse, or used evidence the verse in the Quran which uh, enjoys guidance and good treatment of politics, parents, despite the effort to draw their son or daughter into their politism. Now, Allah said, even if they strive harder, imagine your parents, your father and your mother, both of them are politics. They're striving harder to, well, to tell you to turn away from Islam. Allah said, be good to them. You should not use that as a leeway. So these people are lying against Islam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already promised that this religion will spread because those who are sincere from the non-Muslims who have sound intellect and a pure natural inclination and corrupted natural inclination, they will not uh, uh, they will not reject Islam. Rather, they will accept the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here we'll finish with this by Imam al-Qarafi. Imam al-Qarafi gives a nice uh, explanation concerning this verse. Imam al-Qarafi, Abu Id uh, Ahmed bin Idris, Al-Misri, Al-Qarafi, died in the year 684 Hijri, explained the meaning of being ki kind towards them with the following words, to show gentleness, gentleness to their weak, to show gentleness to their weak, to satisfy the needs of their poor, to feed their hungry, to clothe their naked, to use gentle, kind speech to them from the angle of compassion and mercy toward them, not out of fear, or you believe they are uh, superior Naam. to bear whatever harm raises, raises um, from them when they, are our, uh, when, they, when they are our neighbors despite having the ability to end their harm doing this out of compassion for them not out of fear or veneration uh, or glorify, uh, veneration of them to supplicate for guidance for them that they be made people of happiness to advise them in all their affairs that pertain to their religion and likewise their worldly affair. SubhanAllah. Al-Qarafi was a long time ago. He's not because scared or no. That's a teacher of Islam. Naam, to be good. Look at the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When all the Sahaba came to him, he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, supplicate against my people. He said, Oh Allah, guide them. And he said, But his people, oh Allah, forgive them. They don't know. They don't know what they're doing. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ الْعَالَمِينَ However, there is no any doubt, there are some Muslims out there, Wallahi, because they have not studied Islam correctly, they're giving bad names to Islam. They think, you, if someone is Islamophobe, you have to spit on his face, you have to punch him. Even the, the, the Islam haters, you expose them by speaking nice to them and expose them. Naam? You know, by refuting them with intellectual proofs, and to show their followers you are following someone who is a liar, evil man. When people see you have good character, good manners, they will say, look, people lie against a Muslim. Look this man. You see? Because everyone can shout and swear 
and through stones. Everyone can do that. You don't have to have qualification from Harvard University to learn that. Um, so this is the, the guideline that Yom Qalafi mentioning that you be good to them, you take care of them, and you look after them. And he mentions here, look, so protect them in their absence when anyone embarks upon harming them. So protect their wealth, their family, their honor, subhanallah, and all of their rights and beneficial interests that they are supported in repelling any oppression against them and delivering all their rights to them. A Muslim does all such acts of goodness toward them that one who is in a privileged position can possibly can can possi uh, possibly do towards the one who is under privi uh, privileged and likewise all acts of goodness that even an enemy could possibly possibly do towards an enemy for all of that is from the nobility in character and manners it is desirable that all of we all of what we do with respect to them is from this angle not from the angle of pride and loftiness on our behalf and not from the angle of belittling ourselves and exalting them through such actions towards them. Kitab al furuq in his book al furuq Subhanallah, look, I'm not because we're doing it, because we all show them that, you know, we're arrogant or we are, they are superior or they are better than, better than us. No, because we are following the commandments of Allah, our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I will conclude with a beautiful story. One of the scholars of the Salaf of the past, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. Abu Ahmad ibn Abdul Halim ibn Taymi al Harrani, Abu Abbas, may Allah have mercy upon him. When the, uh, when the Tatar, how do you say Tatar in English? Tatars. Tatars. Yeah. yeah. When the Tatars came, the Tatars were, were a big fitna, big trial and tribulations upon, upon the Muslims and the Christians in the East, in the Eastern world. So when they came to Dimashq, and at that time he was the leader Qazan, and he claimed they embraced Islam. And he wanted to attack uh, uh, Dimashq. So Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy upon him, went to him. And he said to him, you claim me to be Muslim leader. And your forefathers were disbelievers. And they never did what you're doing to the Muslims. And you came to, you came to, to Dimashq and you, ha you, have, you have captured uh, Muslims uh, as the prisoners and, uh, and the Jews and the Christians. So he said to him, look, your speech strikes my heart. And I regret to have did, so I'm gonna free the Muslim prisoners. Look what Ibn Taymiyyah said, no, not just the Muslims, even the Jews and the Christians, because they live under our protection and we, they have a right over us to protect them. Allah Akbar, you will never hear this kalam, this speech. Naam, as we have mentioned many times, لكل مقام مقال ولكل ميدان رجال. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dealt with every situation according to its nature. Naam. We don't believe that if someone slap you, give them the other cheek. Because this teaching, there is no Christian country ever in the history implement this teaching. Rather, what we know Christians going to the people countries taking over. Let alone someone coming to, their, to take over their country and say, no, no, no. You know, we are Christian. You're going to take over Britain? Take over Britain. No, no. We're going to give you Holland. The other cheek is what? Nah, no. If Prophet when he was oppressed and he left Mecca, people tried to harm him. He had to defend himself. Yeah? But the Messenger of Islam clearly said, in the parts of you, don't kill women, children, even innocent people. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, when he sent the people to, to, to Syria, his army, he said, do not kill their worshippers or their scholars. Ibn Taymiyyah said, if the main reason for us to kill the Christians because of their religion, to kill the Christians and the Jews because of their religion, therefore the first people that deserve to be killed, their scholars. But what our Prophet said, Abu Bakr Siddiq said, no, leave them those guys. Kill who? Those who try to kill us. And we'll finish with this. Anyone, as we have mentioned, from the non-Muslims, with a sound intellect and a pure natural inclination, you will accept the truth of Islam. Wallahu a'lam, subhanak Allah bihamdik, shudu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ala alihi wa sallam, 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 wa sallam,